to another episode of Roll Call, TTSH Nursing's very own podcast brought to you by TTSH Nursing Organization Development or TTSH Nursing OD for short. I'm Kim. And I'm Pei Ling. And we are hosts for this episode. Mm-hmm. So over the years, one thing I've noticed about nurses is that we can be very particular about the way certain things are done. I think this is a job hazard lah, because me, myself included, you know. So we ask you guys to send in and share your nursing pet peeves with us. So let's dive right in into this week's episode of Roll Call, Your Nursing Pet Peeves. Okay, so Pele, why don't you start? Okay, so one of the first pet peeves is when people don't put things back where I took them from or they just don't clean up after themselves. So, I guess I can really understand this because, you know, you come to work every day, you come to work at the same place, maybe the same cubicle every day. Mm -hmm. You tend to think about it like it's your second home, you know. So, naturally, you're very protective of your space. Yeah. Yeah, so I can really understand when nurses sometimes get mm, almost territorial. (laughs) Yeah, but uh, we we really mean no offense, you know. We're just protective of our stuff. Yeah, I think as compared to, you know, like other professions where you are also covering other areas, you're not just based in one ward. Mm -hmm. But for nursing, it's like, this is my ward. Yeah, this is my cubicle, my space. My space, my space. My, my no space. no square. <laughs> <laughs> well, so yes. the next pet peeve is uh, when people get angry at us for reminding them to follow up on certain things. And I think that's the thing, right? For nursing, I, I feel like we are the patient's main coordinators. Yes. So we have to coordinate so many different things. The doctor's orders, what the lab says, you know, then after that, what the, the therapist say, and then like all the, the, the where the medication is coming from, from the saying, NLP is saying, yeah. the plans. Yeah, so there's just so many things, right, that... Yeah. Um, and obviously, we want the best for our patients. So sometimes, it gets quite funny uh, when, you know, like, you remind people, like, okay, I also feel a bit pie say, like, yeah. I'm like, hey, sorry, but just now you said this, but can you, like, order it in the computer? Then they'll be like, like, okay, but... Sorry. I'll do it later, you know? Sorry. Yeah, then <laughs> they'll just come up with a very big response to you, yeah. and they're just like, oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sorry <laughs> just doing my job. Yeah. But uh, earlier, we were talking about this, and what Pei said was, a response is better than no response. Yes, a response, at least you know they acknowledge it. They're gonna do it. Yes. Okay, and you're just doing your job. So don't feel bad about it. I used to feel very bad about it when I was new. Yeah. yeah. Very scared, right? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. but <laughs> but if you don't, then sometimes, I mean, because you know as healthcare professionals, we have so many things to do. Yeah. So I can, it's very understandable. And then, you know, sometimes some people will forget certain things. Mm. Some people also have to remind me about like, hey, so yes. well, my patients even, my patients even sometimes have to remind me. I always Bro. tell my patients, okay, I'm gonna do this for you later. If I forget, which yeah, I see, might... Yes. Just remind me. Don't yes, yes. it. Just press the button. Correct, correct. Right, right, right. It's like even like a small plastic bag. Just, yeah, yeah. just remind me. Just, just remind me. I'll get to it. Yes. Yeah. Communication is very important. Yes, yes. Correct, correct. Yeah. So moving on to the next one is when people treat doctors and nurses differently. So examples are like, you're just a nurse. I want to speak to a doctor straight away. You know? And, you know, sometimes it just happens to be a bit more on the... How I say, patient might be a bit tense, you know, the situation yeah, yeah, yeah. might be like a, almost confrontational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it, it doesn't feel good as a nurse to re- receive this kind of feedback because it feels like the patient is like belittling you, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly, it doesn't, it doesn't feel good. But, I mean, I can understand some patients just want that reassurance. You know? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I mean, at the same time, you know, nurses, we are the ones with the patients 24 7. Yes. So if it comes to things like, you know, like, oh, did they eat today and everything, you can just ask us. Ask us. Yeah. Uh, the, the doctors aren't here to see if the patient has eaten. But however, <laughs> I know exactly how many pieces of bread they consume. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I have this one. Right. I had this one patient also who, you know, like, stay in the hospital for quite a while. So, you know, you are basically you are basically their caregiver. Yeah. Yes, nurses, we are patients' yeah. caregivers, right? Especially those, so I think one of my patients who stayed the longest when I was still in main block, um, I had a patient who stayed with us for, I think, three, four months. Yeah. I know exactly how she likes her backside to be clean. Yeah. I know exactly how she likes her Real. tea, how much coffee yes. milk to put inside. Yes, how much right. she likes. And, right. Like, you know, you, you, know you, you just well. you just know you're like yeah. you're like their their like parent sibling whatever at this point in time yeah, yeah, yeah. and like it's not that you know doctors are bad for not knowing these kind of basic information yeah. we just do different jobs yeah, and we yeah, just do different, different jobs. things yeah you know yeah, yeah. the the fact that you know a patient's like preference so closely yeah I I almost take pride in it you know I really it's it's a good thing it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. special yeah. breed <laughs> special breed yes real okay the next thing is. <laughs> 
where we get blamed for everything. Uh, I think this goes to the point earlier where we talked about, you know, like with, for nurses, we are basically the patient's care coordinators, mm, right? Yeah. So sometimes the food is late. Mm. Sometimes the medications might not be ready on time when they are about to be discharged. Well, <laughs> or, you know, sometimes, um, I, don't, I don't know what else, the aircon is not cold enough. <laughs> the, the aircon is not cold enough, yeah. you know, but it's a central cooling system. I'm so sorry. The day is too hot, you know, the weather is just... <laughs> the day is too hot. The day is too hot. <laughs> Brain yeah. gone. Yeah, so I mean, um, I think that, that also comes with the job, you know. I, I, I realise that, you know, because we are the front... We are, okay, but we know people say frontliners, right? But I feel like, at, especially when it comes to patient care in the hospital, we are really like the first people and the people that they constantly see. Yes. So we are like the liaison, you yeah. know? Like, we are the messengers. We are the messengers. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I do understand. And I think it's, so, it's, it's just it's very funny, you know? Like, uh, sometimes um, the computer is not working. The bit is not working. Right. And then, like, we have to troubleshoot and everything. Yeah, so, yeah, it's just yeah. so, it's just so funny how, like, all these small, small things also become part of our job. But I feel like I've already mastered, like, I know how to adjust, like, different things. I know this wire goes where yes like, right you know it's just like i'm like okay now i'm a technician as well i guess <laughs> cross discipline training yeah yes <laughs> okay so the next one is when certain patients look down or even take advantage of female nurses but when the male nurses come along they behave just fine uh, right so this uh, as an ed nurse i see this a bit more often uh, we get a very unique profile of patients in the ed that maybe the ward nurses don't really get often yeah yeah and um, sometimes they, when they see that you're just a female, you know, like small, young lady, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, then they will yeah. try to like towel over you, yeah. really get that shoulders out, you know, buff. <laughs> yeah, and then they will try to intimidate you into doing something like something that is like not even, you know, not, not reasonable, I would say. Yeah. It's not just get me coffee, get me tea. No, that's fine. Mm. But it's like always get me the doctor. Or like mm. something that's like, oh, get me this medicine. I want tremador. Yeah. Mm. Something very often. Yeah, but, yeah. but thankfully, yeah, in this day and age, we are seeing a lot more guys joining nursing as well. Yes. So uh, the guys in nursing, I feel like are very precious. Yes. If I can't, it's okay, but it's okay. Um, well, uh, patience aside, right? Like, I feel like even the smallest of things, like so there's this one time I remember, I think it was like butter or like there was something that I couldn't open. Right. That I was just like, Thank God, my colleague is around. Like my guy colleague is around. The epilim bottles. Oh, yes, epilim yes, yes. is oh, a medication. Oh, that bottle, I don't know. So difficult. Some but... sorcery. You need yeah, to yeah. press it down. Yeah, yeah. You need to sacrifice something, and then you need to open it. Sacrifice your finger. Yeah, sacrifice your finger. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. The the first time I got to open it by myself independently without like a male nurse helping me, I was like, wow. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the dream is paying off. Huh? Yes. <laughs> So the next pet peeve was um, people who think that they know the hospital better than the people working in the hospital or try to break the rules. So I think there are many, definitely as nurses, we experienced many examples of this. But I think the, the one that we wanted to focus on was, you know, our visiting policy. Right. Uh, I think during during COVID, the visiting policy became very strict, mm. obviously, for the welfare of our patients and even for the family members, right? Uh, and now that, you know, things are becoming a bit more chill, uh, we've relaxed it a bit, but mm. there's still a limitation to how many people can be at the bedside at a point in time. Uh, you know, there's also like an age restriction to yeah. protect the younger family members who might want to come and visit, yes. also to protect our patients. Yes. So I think we've personally experienced a lot of times where they're like, you know, like, just let one, more, just let one more. Um, or you know like all of us are, especially like maybe weekends or holidays yeah. understandably so and I feel like I mean obviously as humans ourselves I really empathise with them you know I understand yeah. like, maybe it's like the patient's birthday yeah, or a big right. situation you know yeah. you want to be together but yeah. at the same time we also need to protect our other patients we also want to pretend prevent any outbreaks from happening you know like yeah, right. you, never, you really never know uh, that someone might have something yeah like you know, especially with children you know like yeah. children they touch many things every day you know sometimes your child may have like hand full mouth disease you know imagine just imagine a ward of old people <laughs> all having hand foot mouth disease that's, yeah it's not what we want is this not definitely no we want no nah. yeah nah. so so i hope that you know like if if your patient hopefully not or a family member that you know like whenever we enforce these kind of protocols or rules there's always a purpose and a reason behind it just yeah. be patient with us and be understanding as well lah. yeah yeah so the next one is actually a pretty good one. It's when patients think that they are troubling us and then they don't want to disturb us and then it results into something that, you know, we have to deal with later on. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. uh maybe that's too big. Okay, may I yeah. give you an example? Yeah. Right. So I have a I had a patient the other day. Um she was brought to the hospital like so. 
not showered. When she came into my care, same thing. Yep. She was still so, you know. Mm. And like, she w- the main reason why is because like, nobody actually knew. She didn't tell her children. She didn't yep. tell anyone who brought her in. Yep. Because she just doesn't want to trouble them. Yep. And I'm not talking even about like, a patient who's confused mm. uh, in a state of not knowing where they are yeah. or who they are or whatever. Yep. Yep. But she's completely alert. She's less like you and me. It's just that she's too paisy to ask for help mm. because it's like her first time ever in, in, in the hospital in this position where mm. she had back pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tra- it's really tragic. She cannot, she couldn't even like stand up. She couldn't mm. sit up and she was just embarrassed, right? And in the end, I mean, I felt really bad at that moment. Yeah. At to a certain point, I felt like I was a savior yeah. because I didn't notice it earlier that she was so. Yeah. And when I mean so, she was also like unbathed for like mm. she didn't bathe for like three days, mm. and like it made a really lasting impression on me. Of of course, I bathed her. I yeah. showered her very thoroughly. I changed the bed sheets, everything, mm. right? But. It just, every time I think of this moment, I just, something inside me aches, you know. Yeah. Yeah. These are the kind of moments where I scold a patient, but in a very loving way, I'm like, why you never tell Please, me? Please, just tell me the time. time. It's okay. <laughs> like, no, but I saw you serving the medicine and I don't want you to disturb you. I'm yeah. like, they're like, oh. you you look like, you know, you got a lot of things to do, you know. Yeah. And it's okay, I can be the last one. Yeah. No, no, no. It's okay, just tell us. Yeah, you know? especially all these kind of things where, you know, it's really like your foundational basic human mm-hmm. decency dignity and all that like yeah. as nurses we are here to provide you care yes. and to you know like respect even protect your dignity uh, yeah, and yeah, your decency yeah, yeah. so all these basic basic things even though it might seem like very tedious things for us but yes. we are more than willing to you know like I, yeah. I, it's okay I can delay my stuff you know if it's urgent and everything I'll bring you to the toilet yeah, it's not a bad thing actually this, this yeah. is not a bad thing it's just a pet peeve because <laughs> it just makes me feel a bit like why never tell me why you know then I can manage my time better you know yeah, yeah. like this kind of this can't be high say to us uh. yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 because we don't know how you're feeling yeah. and sometimes when you're sorry right, only you will know ma right yeah because we can see yeah we can see <laughs> okay so we'll move on to the submissions that actually our viewers sent in so the first one <laughs> someone said those who ask a million questions during handover instead of listening to the handover so a handover is basically, you know, like morning shift, handing over the patients and like, you know, what happened during their shift to the next shift, like to the yeah. afternoon shift, etc, etc. So the, it's a very common experience where, you know, like maybe I'm passing the report to Pei Ling. I'll be yeah. like, okay, yeah, so this patient there should be like, yeah. okay, so what, what this medicine what you, you haven't served yet? Yeah, what this thing you haven't do? Uh? <laughs> uh, when are we doing this? Uh? What yeah. the vital signs not taken? Uh? And then I'll be like, actually, I was just... So as I was saying, you know, yeah. as I was getting to it, I was actually getting to that point there. So I think this is a very personal, ex- pe- personal preference kind of thing. And... Um, I think it shows, you know, that like as nurses, we are very excited. We are very excited yes. and passionate to care for you. That's why they're asking so many questions. And yes, like, you know, like, oh my God, very I'm so excited. concerned. I'm yes. so excited to start my shit. Yes. <laughs> but sometimes we just mm-hmm. gotta chill. Yeah. You know? But I think after a while, you know, like in nursing, right, you work together with the same colleagues for so long that yeah. you kind of get familiar with everyone's patterns. Just yes. like earlier we said, right, about yeah. our patients, you know, like especially those that stay for very long, yes. you get familiar with their patterns. So it's it's just like another family, like, yeah, you know, when right. you get familiar with their patterns, then you know, okay, this is how it's going to be like when you're handing over. Yeah, it's like, she's just like it's that. Okay. Don't mind don't her. Yeah. yeah, just like, yeah, okay, whatever. She's like that, everybody. You know? Yeah, like I'm assuming that if you're asking all these questions, means, good, means you probably came early. Yes. You read your report. Correct. So you already know the patient, you yes. know. And you should do that. Yes. Good practices. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think the next one, Penny will share because it's a lot more, I feel like, relatable to ED side. Unfortunately, yeah. It's when patients come into the hospital, then they refuse everything. Don't want this IV plug, don't want ECG, don't want hypocal. Okay, so all these are very, very common procedures that we do to like check on the basic things like blood sugar levels, yeah. how your heart is functioning. Yeah. They are very basic tests, yeah. right? And sometimes they'll just be like, no, no, I don't want this, I don't want this. Or they come to the ED or hospital for one specific thing yeah, or they just I only want this thing this thing usually it's like IV fluids yeah, and yeah. then I gotta be like oh, no I want this 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 only you know but with that said these are like extreme cases yeah. usually they don't come presenting with like just one thing they don't want yeah. they don't want multiple things mm. it's less you don't want an IV plug yeah. but because you're terrified right you're, you're terrified of needles so. there's yeah. like an oral option is available. For yeah. the for potassium, there's oral potassium available. You'd rather drink it than, you know... Unless it. you come in for a stomach infection, you're vomiting yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that, you know, It doesn't make sense for us yeah, to yeah. give you an oral one. And obviously, we will suggest 
I feel. Yes, so. correct. But however, you know, if these kind of compromises can be made, by all means, you know, we will do it. Yeah, they have a discussion with us. Yes, yeah. have a discussion with us. Not, not, not everything is like, you know, we have we are fighting in patients. No, 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 yeah. no. Yeah, we we don't want this, but we recommend this for a certain reason, you know. Like, yeah. for example, we recommend you do an ECG because you need to find out whether, you know, your heart is, okay. you know, okay. Is it a contributing factor to what you're feeling? Yeah. But, like, sometimes, sometimes when you pick and choose, it's like... What's the what's the logic? We can't you know? we can't really as healthcare professionals. It will be difficult for us to come to a cohesive, coherent diagnosis or something like you know if you do yeah. certain things. We, yeah, then, yeah. So that's why it's always when I explain it to these people, it's always these are the things that the doctor recommended. Yeah, right. Um, you have a right to refuse, mm-hmm. but uh, I think it's a discussion that we need to have together, yeah. law. If it's reasonable, then by all means, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but if you're just here refusing for the sake of refusing, then I think there are deeper <laughs> questions to ask. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the next fat peeve was actually submitted by an ED nurse. Uh, and she said, emergency department sending patients to the ward without calling. But as an ED nurse, my pet peeve is when ward nurses get pissed at us for not calling. Yes. So in our hospital, um, for ED, right, we use a trackboard. So yeah. it's like a summary of everything. You can mm. see everything at a glance. And then there's a column that specifically writes BMU, which is bed management unit, mm. comments. Usually if a ward wants us to call, uh, yeah, call, they will write their CBS, which is call before then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, if we don't see the comment, yeah. then obviously we won't call. We just yeah. assume that, oh, all is good. Bed is ready, you know? Send, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we are good at. We just send, right? Um, sometimes we get overzealous, right? And we just end up stranded. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not ready. Or the staff is not ready. <laughs> too excited. You know, too excited. Yeah, see, we are always excited. Yeah. Yes. Um, but I guess to that, I, as an ED nurse, I've learned the patterns of certain wards. Mm. Even though there is no CBS. Yeah. It's you know to my pregnancy to call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember there's this one time when I was a very new nurse and I think it was one of my first few night shifts. Then <laughs> So I was busy because um, sometimes during night shift, you know, you're busy like maybe, help, maybe helping patients change diapers and yeah. we have lesser manpower on during night shifts also. So I think I was in one of my patients, uh, I was in a cubicle then like, the curtains were closed. I was like changing diapers or doing something, I can't remember. <laughs> then when I came out, right, there was this super cute uncle just sitting in the corridor, <laughs> like, on the bed. Just <laughs> that was, that was like, I was like, you weren't here five minutes ago when I just went inside. Right? Then he was just like, oh, oh like, I think he was he said in Chinese. He was like, oh, the nurse just sent me, uh, like, I just I just got here. Then I just sit here and wait for you. That was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, he was so cute. such a lovely patient. Last right. So, so I remember that. Then I was just like, I was like, this? Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, but I understand. I mean, like, yeah. sometimes, you know, the emergency department gets very busy. And definitely one of your top priorities is to if there's a bit for the patient yeah. to send the patient and faster yeah. the patient a bit so I completely understand yeah right sometimes I'm, I'm just like so sorry oh, man if you catch if you catch if you catch me at a bad time I'll be like you know like you, the, I imagine it in slow-mo you know like the e is like you know you know, there's that meme I can't remember from which movie then like the, the, the nurse like you, you walk past each other then you're just like staring at each yes, other yes right, right right I imagine it right in my head like if if, if my life was a movie right it would be the ED nurse like pushing the patient a bit and just like you know like kind of like yeah, that's like, right. That's right. <laughs> I like you slow mo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes, I mean, I yeah. can, I can imagine that. Imagine, right? Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, right, I feel like as ED nurses, right, sometimes you are just too like hyped up on adrenaline, mm. or more like you know the excitement. Oh my god, there's there's a, a bit. bit. There's a bit. You know, yeah, yeah. also partially because we understand that sometimes the ED can be. You know, not not so pleasant. Can be very loud. Yeah. yeah, and hectic, and like we just want to get patients to a more comfortable environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get too, like I said, overzealous, overexcited. <laughs> we just push. You know, like you. The phrase that you probably hear the most in ED. Yeah. Is just push, just send, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't know. Fair it's just fair. us. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah. Okay. The next next point. The next point is when people borrow my stationery. And don't return it. Like, I think I have these many pants, man. I think this goes back to the first point where like nurses are very protective. Yes, of their yes, space. yes, yes. Our space, our items, so, everything. Yeah, but let me show you what I bring to work oh, at pen. Yeah. Why? Why will you take this away from me? <laughs> I think she purposely bought that because it's very like 
nurses usually use the very generic yeah. you know, pens with like the four different colors and yes, everything. Yes. It's a very special pen. Like yeah. if I saw that, I'll be like, okay, this is someone's special pen. This is like very recognizable. So like if anybody sees these patterned like animal pens, like we'll probably know it's mine. Like I have eaten in like other animals like chicken, duck. Yeah. And the last submission and the last pet peeve that we have is when there's one mil of lactulose or KCL left in the bottle in the medicine trolley. So again, for context, lactulose and KCL. Lactulose is a medicine that basically helps you to poo. Better, yeah. Poo easily. KCL yes. is potassium, but like in a liquid oral yes, form. The one that I said you could drink. Yes. Yeah. So these are common medication bottles that we share among our patients. It's mm. not just like one patient has one, you know, because yeah. Um, yeah, everyone kind of shares. It's very, very common medication. So sometimes... When, you know, like, I, I'm like, okay, gonna, it's time to serve my medicine. And then I try to boil it. Usually, it's ordered in, like, 10 mil, yeah, or 20 right. mil. So, it's quite a lot, you know. We don't give, yeah. like, very small doses. So, yeah. I'll be like, I'll be like, the moment I lift up the bottle, yeah, I like, feel it, like, sus. this mm. is light. Then, yeah. only that I'll pour it, it just, just one mil comes out. And I'll be like, who was the one that used this the previous time? Yeah, right. But the very, very pleasant feeling you get when it pours out, and it pours exactly to 10 mil, yeah, whatever the way order. And you're just like, Wow, that was like the best day of my life, you know. Just makes my whole day. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. This is, uh, it's, 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 okay, it's so funny, right? Because it's such a small thing. But yeah. like, sometimes, if you catch me on a bad day, right? Like, yeah. you're so busy. Yes. And you're like doing stuff. And you just want to faster serve your mess yeah, and get, yeah. get it over and done with. Then you pour the thing and you're like, oh. You're just like, oh my god. And I will be like, oh. and yeah. go to the room and like, take the other bottle. Like, <laughs> label it. Label like it. Like it. Yeah. <laughs> And really pause the rest. I feel like this is very funny because I feel like this is a very niche pet peeve. Yes. I feel like nurses, right. really the only nurses who understand. Yeah, it's like, it's just that one little bit left and it's like, oh my god. No, oh, yeah. today is the day. It's <laughs> my turn now. <laughs> to top of the bottle. Yes. <sighs> Anyways, that sums up all pet peeves. I think we saved the, yeah. the most irritating one for last. Yeah, time. right, right, right. The ones that we yet were about the most. <laughs> So anyway, that concludes this episode of Roll Call. Remember that you can also check out our podcast on Spotify and Nurses of TTSH. Like, share, or subscribe to our channel and drop us a comment if there's any nursing pet peeves we did not mention. Mm -hmm. For more updates and opportunities to contribute to our podcast episodes, feel free to follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Sorry, I didn't mean feel free. Do follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Nurses of TTSH. If you have any topic suggestions or anyone you'd like us to feature or if you'd like to join the team, feel free to drop us a DM as well. We'll catch you guys in the next roll call. Until then, have a good shift. Bye!